why don't we go ahead and get started? It is 3.01. Um, so I just wanted to say hello and welcome. Thank you everyone for coming today. Uh, my name is Hannah Wickern and I am from the Intertribal Council of Michigan. I'm going to be helping to facilitate today's webinar um, for this uh, Tribal Vaccine Equity Project, which you can see here on the slides. Uh, the webinar today is Engaging Your Virtual Audience, Best Practicing, best practices in hosting online events. Um, so this webinar will be recorded and it will be available on our website afterwards. I'll make sure to post that in the chat box so you can um, see all of the information about the project. And uh, we'll be making sure to leave a good amount of time today for questions um, and discussion at the end of the presentation. We do ask that um, everyone stay muted during the presentation just to minimize background noise, um, but please feel free to type any questions in the chat box. I'll be monitoring that and then um, Sarah will be sure to um, answer those questions. So uh, our, pre our presenter today is Sarah Keller and um, I will pass it over to you, Sarah, to introduce yourself. Thank you. I'm glad we have such a big group. Yeah, my name is Sarah. Um, I'm the Health Equity Communications Specialist for the Intertribal Council of Michigan. Um, I will be presenting um, a review of the toolkit for the um, engaging your virtual audience, best practices in hosting online events um, from um, the toolkit that we'll share in the chat box. And I wanted to do a quick round of introductions, um, but we do have a pretty large group here. So I think what I'm going to do is have you guys type in the chat just where you're joining from and what thing, what is one thing you're looking forward to, to this week. And I can, I can start. I'm joining from um, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, it's a pretty rainy day here. Um, this week I'm looking forward to um, I just recently got a hot yoga membership, so I've been trying that out this month. Awesome. Looks like it's pretty rainy over in Flint. We got some um, folks from Alaska, uh, Los Angeles. Joining from Nebraska. all over the place. And looks like Hannah put in the chat as well, the toolkit for um, online engagement. Um, this, this toolkit is really just a guide to hosting virtual meetings within your community. And it, it goes over the strategies for facilitating um, specific, specifically for if you were to host an event with community members or partners or stakeholders. Um, and a lot of these tips are great for your internal meetings as well. So we got some people joining, so I'll give it a little bit. Thank you guys for typing in the chat. Can go ahead. And so for today, uh, we'll go through the five practices for virtual community engagement in indigenous, rural, and remote communities, some tips for preparing and hosting the meeting, and we'll have time for questions um, and a space for you guys to share your experiences with virtual meetings. Um, as well as support for the Vaccine Equity Project. Um, I know a lot of you guys are here as part of um, a requirement for the Vaccine Equity Project. And luckily we have Hannah here who is our um, program manager for that. So the first wise practice, these were developed as part of um, Nature United with Amanda Sheedy. Um, they did a series of workshops with First Nations leaders to the, who wanted to really just learn uh, what the best practices were for engaging people during virtual meetings. And so they got together and 
and just learned what, um, what worked for them. Um, and so they identified five different practices from these meetings. And the first one um, was connecting to land and culture. Um, meetings are really a space to connect with one another. Um, and during in-person meetings, there's a lot of opportunities to host a workshop on the land or integrate cultural activities such as art or language um, and ceremonies. And we have to get creative when bringing these into virtual spaces. And so a couple of ways um, we can do this are by incorporating languages, sharing cultural wisdom about the current season. Um, you can do land acknowledgements such as um, just recognizing the traditional names um, and um, indigenous people, sharing photos of the land, um, starting, your video, starting your meeting with a video and doing opening circles and prayer to um, engage and connect with culture and land. The second wise practice is to create a caring, healing and connected atmosphere. Uh, your participants want to feel um, included in your meeting. And so a great way to do this is to start out by acknowledging who's in the meeting. And as you all know, we did this today. It gets a little bit trickier when you have more people, but there's a lot of opportunities for using the chat or doing a breakout room if you have a really large group. Um, and then just providing space for um, space and time for that as well. Um, you'll want to plan for breaks, especially if your meeting is going to be really long. <clears throat> uh, it's a good idea to have breaks that are um, some that that are like with your cameras off so people can leave and go get um, a snack or tea. And then also having breaks that are engaged. So maybe you're you're doing an activity or you're taking like, you're doing a guided meditation or stretching um, that can really help with, with people's engagement and help with like the Zoom, so-called Zoom burnout. The third wide, wise practice is um, getting people to your meeting. And so you'll wanna identify a, a clear plan on how you're getting the meeting, to, like how pe people are becoming aware of your meeting. Um, it's important to use plain language and use clear meeting details when you're sending an invitation. Um, and this is like your who, what, when, why, um, being right up front about the purpose of the meeting, um, using the most exciting details to um, gather people to your meeting. And with this, it's a good idea to form a communications plan. Um, and you know your audience best, so maybe social media is gonna work. Maybe you will send them an, an email. Um, if you're doing like a hybrid meeting, you'll have to decide um, what, what is the best way to, to communicate with people and, and how you're gonna get them those details. I know we all, we've all been in a situation where we're invited to a meeting, but we can't figure out how to register or um, there's just confusion on that. So planning for that is um, a best practice that was identified. And you can also um, reach out to elders and community members um, personally so that they can be specifically invited and engaged. Um, a lot of times virtual meetings are kind of scary for people who've never been to them. Um, and if you decide that maybe um, a lot of your community members are hesitant, then the toolkit had actually suggested um, setting up a fun meeting. So maybe you, you host a bingo night on a virtual platform and have prizes and um, doing a more laid back kind of meeting. And this kind of leads into wise practice number four, which is making the meeting accessible to everyone. Um, before the meeting, you can have time to join early, um, have a technical support session, um, and just be patient with, with technology and be, um, 
be aware that it will happen, be prepared. Um, everyone has, has technical issues um, and not everyone certainly has, not everyone has a um, home office certainly that they, they have access to. Um, there's a variety of different ways that participants can contribute such as um, a chat box using polls. Um, like I, I mentioned that you can use breakout rooms, which can be a great way for smaller discussions to take place. Um, this is a um, Zoom meeting room, but they also have webinar types, if, um, which would have a Q and A question and answer box, um, which are sometimes helpful for um, if you're having a more presentation type meeting, such as what we're doing today. Um, but you'll have to think about what structure you want and what is most appropriate for your, for your meeting. And the fifth practice um, is just to prepare. And so you'll wanna define your goals for, and purpose of the meeting. Um, the who, what, when, where, how, and why. Um, and these are great things to include in your event invitation. Um, decide which platform is best for your event. So um, whether you're having it on Zoom, having a webinar type, or even having a hybrid meeting can be, can be um, useful. And we're gonna I'll mention that later as well. So there's a few, a few things with hybrid meetings that when challenges can come up. Um, you'll want to send out any supporting documents beforehand, um, just like you would do in a, a non in person meeting, um, just so that all the materials um, can reach your participants. Um, make make sure to reach out to elders and um, yeah, make sure everyone is prepared for the meeting well in advance. Um, as and and make sure you're prepared for the meeting space as well. I'm. Um, if you ever hosted a meeting, it's, it can be quite intimidating when you have all the controls. So I always hop on like 30 minutes early just so I can become familiar with the technology. And lastly, the, the toolkit um, has really good checklists for preparing for online meetings. Um, I'll try to share at the end, but they'll have um, a guide that will help you prep and plan for your event. <clears throat> a couple of tips and tricks for ho hosting a, a virtual meeting. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but introducing everyone in the meeting can really set the tone with your opener. Um, if you if you do have time to do a round of introductions, this can really help test everyone's technology, make sure their audio is working and their, um, their camera is accessible. Um, the toolkit has some additional tips for technology, um, such as like turning off the, the audio and calling in with a phone. Um, Opening with an icebreaker or opening circle um, can make people feel included. Opening circles are a well-established way for running meetings in many indigenous communities. Um, and these can ensure that everyone has a voice and, and a space to share um, their needs and express themselves. And you also wanna establish, establish a a collective agreement for how you want to run your meeting, um, especially if it's a reoccurring meeting. Um, you'll want to make sure uh, everyone's agreeing on what what is acceptable and non acceptable. Maybe you agree that you don't want people eating dinner during your meeting. Um, stuff that seems silly, but can can help make the meeting space more safe and comfortable. A couple of tips um, encouraging participation. During a hybrid meeting, you'll want to de designate an in-person advocate for the virtual participants. 
Um, oftentimes when you have some people that are in person and some people that are on a screen, there can be a, kind of a disconnect. And so having one person in your, in your meeting room that is kind of making sure that the virtual participants are engaged is um, a really great way to advocate for them. Um, you can use sharing circles, which is just uh, going around and asking everyone um, their opinion on an idea, um, using a lot of visuals and screen sharing. So Zoom has a lot of tools that um, you can use like whiteboards um, and you can open up like a Google document and have people generate ideas together and that way, that way everyone can kind of visualize what, what's going on. And then with that, um, supporting effective decision-making online. So repeating, um, <clears throat> repeating the ideas that are proposed um, a few times, just because things can get lost, um, people's audio can go out, um, and then you might get to the end of the meeting and, and say, wow, that was a great meeting, but we didn't generate any next steps. Um, so that can really be a great way to um, make your uh, meeting more purposeful. And then afterwards, uh, following up with a summary and meeting notes um, can help with, with those next steps. And always ask for feed, feedback on the meeting format. Ask your participants if, if they like um, how you're running the meeting, if they need more breaks, if they would rather not have breaks so the meeting can be shorter. Um, you're in charge of your own meeting, so you can really make it um, however, however you best fits for your um, space. And then I wanted to open up oops, um, the floor here for you guys to, to give your um, best advice. I'm, I'm sure we have people here that have hosted events online. Um, and so if you don't mind unmuting or posting in the chat uh, what barriers you've encountered and how did you overcome them, I would appreciate your input. So if anyone has any examples of a barrier they encountered with a virtual meeting, um, feel free to unmute. lags due to internet capacity. Lags, you said? Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh, yeah. Internet connection can be a really big challenge, especially for rural places and really anywhere. So one of the things we've experienced is um, a lack of actual internet services for, um, you know, we're in rural Oklahoma and there's a lot of people that don't have fiber or internet. And, and so we've come up with resources and partnered with our tribal library to allow them to check out hotspots to attend the meeting and just had to set that up prior to the meeting. That's a great idea. Thank you for sharing. Has anyone else had any experience with using hotspots or advice for internet connection? I have, and um, I think they're a great backup, especially for you know presenters. Although it is sometimes really hard for people to participate because the screens are usually really small. And so it's hard for people to read slides and see faces. Definitely, thank you. We've, we've noticed that turning on closed captioning um, can help to just help catching what people are saying. Yeah, and Carol said recording the meeting. Yeah, I'm glad somebody said recording the meeting because here in Nebraska, uh, over the last day and a half, we had our uh, statewide um, public health meeting and for those that were attending virtually, 
you were able to do a majority of the breakouts, but some of the breakouts with some of the more dynamic uh, topics were not available. So uh, that's something to keep in mind too of how many breakouts you have if you're having a larger um, gathering. That's a good point. I know with breakouts, I've been in breakout um, sessions and especially for those who joined by phone. And I guess this could be kind of considered hybrid, but um, making sure that you explain what's going on um, if they don't have the visual cues to go along with things. Um, so being really thoughtful and inclusive with who, how you're speaking to your group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> Amber said, um, having another coworker managing the PowerPoint. Um, I agree. I, I think having co-facilitators um, has helped us so much, especially just, it's, it's a lot to run the meeting slides, present and like monitor the chat and monitor um, just everything else. So definitely, you know, have as many facilitators as you can. I'd like to add um, being prepared and maybe having your speakers uh, join earlier, like even a half hour earlier to be able to uh, troubleshoot any volume issues or uh, just making sure everyone's ready to go when the meeting time is set to start. Yeah, I really like that. And something I wanted to men mention earlier too, that, which the toolkit goes over, um, is um, because you guys know your communities best and maybe you feel like a lot of, a lot of folks are gonna have some struggles with um, knowing how to join the meeting. And so having like maybe a th 30 minutes beforehand of anyone who wants to come and, and try to figure that out can really, I think be a welcoming technique. Another thing that I've seen is if people don't have access to internet services, they will gather at a local place um, as a group to watch the presentation together. So that way they won't have to worry about trying to find a place to log in at. That sounds like something that could be paired really well with, um, forget who mentioned it before, but um, going to the library or um, running out hotspots. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, we have some really great ideas in the chat. Um, seems like a, a good mix of having the agenda and um, sending out things ahead of time. Even if you have to mail things too. Does anyone have any um, techniques they've used for specifically encouraging participation during virtual meetings? Maybe you have like a favorite icebreaker that you like that's um, been successful. I know it can be helpful, maybe not in this size group, but if you have a smaller group, um, asking folks to introduce themselves and then saying pass it to the person who's next on your screen um, as a way of kind of moving through introductions. It's been helpful. Yeah, I, I like that. And I, I definitely was going to mention too, if you're doing a round of introductions, it's really helpful to either what you said, have, have a person pick who's next or um, going down the list if, and facilitating that. Um, I know I've been in meetings where they just give it a like free for all for introductions and it's, 
it's like panic. <laughs> Yeah, pulling. We got lots of ideas in the in the chat. Seems like food is very popular. <laughs> I like this idea, Erin, of having um, a little contest for participating. I'm curious if anyone else has used like a rewards based system. Crystal said that she used um, a mural board to get participants to participate. <laughs> Raffles during Facebook Lives. I know IT uh, Intertribal Council has has done that with some of the our partners. Thank you all for participating and sharing your ideas. This is uh, really valuable. Um, and I'm hoping we can um, save some of these ideas to send out um, as a follow-up to this meeting and for whoever um, couldn't make it today. Um, and then I just wanted to um, kind of show what the toolkit looks like. Um, they have some um, specific um, challenges and solutions to um, meetings. This one's just a screenshot of the technology ones, but definitely I encourage you to check out their resource. Um, it's um, really extensive on, on the amount of research they did for online meetings. And then I wanted to um, really quick go over the opportunities we have for the vaccine equity project. Um, specifically, this was a this is one of the opportunities that you have for funding um, is to host an interactive vaccine education event. Um, and so this could look like either a Zoom webinar or um, maybe a Facebook Live uh, roundtable just to provide education um, or open up the floor for people to ask questions about um, the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, and then this is the application process, um, which I think uh, if you can, Hannah, add the link in the chat, that would be great. Yes. Um, everything is on our website as well for um, the applic the um, funding award. Um, you'll just need to do a description of your event, um, your estimated um, or target number of attendees for and reach for the event, and then how you would plan to like record and report these outcomes, as well as your budget, which um, we just need like a brief description of. Yeah, I can kind of elaborate here if you'd like, Sarah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so this webinar stemmed from the Tribal Vaccine Equity Project, which really aims to um, increase vaccinations uh, with a focus on COVID, but knowing that all vaccinations are a great public health tool. Um, and then also increasing access and um, addressing vaccine hesitancy. So um, hosting a vex or excuse me, hosting an online event similar to this Zoom meeting, or maybe it's even um, an in-person meeting to address vaccine hesitancy, you know, understand um, what some of the concerns are about the vaccine, having 
um, you know, trusted and credible folks there to answer those questions. Um, that's those are the types of events that we are hoping for you all to um, host. And we have, like Sarah said, these awards to support that. Um, it really is meant to be a flexible funding opportunity. Um, you'll see that if you um, go through and look at the application process, very brief in, in reporting, um, but we are trying to understand some of the best practices and lessons learned that you get out of those. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions um, about this opportunity or the Tribal Vaccine Equity Project as a whole. Um, but yeah, just, just a little brief overview there. I'm not sure, Sarah, if you have um, a little bit more to present on and, and we can have time oh, for this. This is questions. perfect. Okay, perfect. So yeah, I guess we'll leave it open to questions. Have you, has anybody hosted a vaccine hesitancy event uh, where you address questions, whether it's Facebook, in person, Zoom, anything like that? How is it gone? So it looks like Nancy has. Um, Nancy, if you care to unmute and tell us a little bit about how that went, we'd love to hear. Hi, everybody. I'm Nancy Velasquez. Um, so we had um, Dr. Um, Anton from DHHS um, come and speak. But when COVID first started, um, we had an epidemiologist come in and do a Facebook Live. But then we also had Dr. Anton last year um, speak on the vaccinations and it was a Facebook live event. And we've done a couple of them actually. So um, it went really, really well. We had a lot of people ask questions and uh, we still had people that were a little bit um, hesitant, but we also had a lot of people who um, were a little bit more comfortable in discussing and, and getting um, vaccinated. So um, even if we were able to calm the nerves of one or two people and get them vaccinated, I call it a success. Absolutely. Can I ask a follow-up question to that? Um, did you have any anti-vax folks join or type in the comments? How did you handle it? Um, no, we didn't have any, anybody leave any negative comments. Um, we, we, we still are on our Facebook page, um, for the Ponca tribe on our main pages, we still have people that will say, you know, they're not getting the quote unquote jab. Um, but I mean, there's nothing that we can honestly do. Um, even if we present to them, you know, what if one of your family members got it? Or God forbid, what if one of your family members died of it? You know, would that change your mind? And for some people, it does not change their mind, which is really sad, so. Yeah. I know it's, it's, um... It's difficult to read um, who is in, you know, on the spectrum, who is in that kind of wait and see or, or still wanting to <laughs> hear about um, or learn about the vaccine, I guess. So um, another, yeah. I'm sorry, another thing that we did for our tribal members is, uh, and Katie Yunker <laughs> just sent me a message about it. Um, that we did an incentive for our tribal members. Um, if you completed your two rounds of the vac vaccination, um, you were given um, a gift card. So, um, and that was, that was, seemed to go over pretty well, but for tribal members, for the Ponca tribe, we really didn't have 
um, a whole lot of hesitancy and other tribes that come to our clinic. Um, we were, our clinics, our vaccine clinics were super busy for a long time and we're just getting ready to uh, kickstart the second round of boosters for people who want them because we've had at least 30, 40 people um, ask about them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Do you have any other um, questions or comments, advice, either about the this webinar or the vaccine equity project? And Hina did um, post the full toolkit from Indigenous, Indigenous Guardians in the chat. Sounds like incentives are mm -hmm. a great way to encourage either participation or even um, to get vaccinated. Thanks for sharing, Janice. Yeah, I'm wondering if um, that could be a, a way that they, Hannah could use their um, funding is for incentives for participating in an online event? Absolutely, yeah. All right. Well, we will um, make sure to send out a follow-up email in the next day. Um, with the recording, um, the recording will be available on our website and uh, the slides will be as well. Uh, if you do have any questions, you can reach out to me. Uh, my name is Hannah Wickern and uh, my contact information is on the bottom of this slide. Um, Sarah, I will make sure to send out your contact information as well if you have any questions. Thank you. Um, yeah, and to learn more about the Vaccine Equity Project, you can visit our website, um, which is on this last page here. So uh, we appreciate all of your time and uh, the feedback and participation uh, and really enjoyed today's discussion. Um, so yeah, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you everyone for sharing. I really, we really value, value your, um, feedback and your experiences really um, are what are going to drive success for hosting virtual events and um, getting vaccinations in arms. <laughs>